Greetings. Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. My name is Kimberly Wright. Welcome to Hand Built Pottery. Thanks so much for joining and continuing to be supportive to this class. Uh, once again, today is uh, Thursday, October the 7th, 2021. All right. If you find any inspiration from these holidays and events, please jot them down. They may be able to help you with some of your uh, upcoming projects, art, anything like that. Today is Mysore Dasara Day, National Depression Screening Day, National Frappe Day, woo, and Nav Navratri Day. All right, let's go back and see what that Mysore Dasara day is about. It is about a festival of the goddess Chimunda. And this festival is uh, Hindu. All right, so let's see about this last date as well. This is another Sharada Navrati. It's another Hindu holiday. All right. So it must be a great time for the Hindu or the Indian people. Uh, it's a great time for all of us out there. All right. Today we are going to be um, concentrating on just basically what we did last week. We made some um, stamps by hand. And we're going to utilize those steps today just to see how the impressions look. First, I'm going to show you the last um, or other picture that I had that I did complete that I wasn't able to show you because I didn't have it, which was the skeleton clay canvas art. I think it came out really, really well. It's like one of my favorite pieces out of all of them. So I just want to show you, I do have the corner for it. And this is the actual piece right here. Frame, you know, I wanted to show you all how it looked framed. That's beautiful, Kimmy. Thank you, lovely. I, I love that. And, and and it looks good in the black frame. Thanks so much. Yeah, I thought that went really good with the eyes. And Yes. Thank y'all so much for helping me choose the background and which way to turn it and all that good stuff. All right. So you see how beautiful incorporating the clay with a piece of canvas can be a beautiful piece of art to hang on the wall. So I can't wait to still see your pieces that you create and um, just be creative. So I did create four, which I think I probably still will do some more in the future. I did the skull, the seahorse, the ram and the frog. So I will be showing y'all that frog another time. All right. I want you all to know that um, I'm giving everybody a little bit more time. And then I heard about two to three people said that they were not interested in making the bust um, project. However, we still will be making that. I'm still going to be uh, prolonging that project due to the fact that I'm waiting on a few more people to get their wig heads or their styrofoam head to use as an armature or a mold. And so therefore, we're going to probably start next week on our uh, hot air balloon project. So I want you all to do some research on uh, hot air balloons, what they look like, what are the com compartments, in case you wanna make yours uh, more representational, looking more real, and uh, just seeing some of the avenues that you can take. And once you get the gist of what a 
hot air balloon consists of, all the parts and all that type of thing, then I want you to go into how can you make yours your own, meaning like be creative. Is it going to have, I mean, I'm not saying you may, is it going to have wings? Is it going to have, uh, you know, your own design aesthetic? And also with the actual balloon, you will be able to uh, put a little bit of yourself in there. So I want you to think about the design. Even if your design around the balloon is just colors, how sometimes you see the color uh, palettes blocked out, that's just fine. But if you want to be really unique and um, create a beautiful design that will represent you as an artist, like what represents you as an artist or as a person. So that's what I want you to uh, start trying to jot down what the design of your balloon is gonna be. It's kind of like what you're all about, what you're into, that type of thing. All right. So I'm just gonna quickly uh, give you some info. A hot air balloon is a lighter than air aircraft consisting of a bag called an envelope, which contains heated air. Suspended beneath is a gondola. The basket, what I'm talking about is called a gondola or wicker basket. In some long distance or high altitude balloons, it's called a capsule which carries passengers and a source of heat. In most cases, an open flame caused by burning liquid propane. The heated air inside the envelope makes it buoyant since it has a lower density than the colder air outside the envelope. As with all aircraft, hot air balloons cannot fly beyond the atmosphere. The envelope does not have to be sealed at the bottom. Since the air inside the envelope or the basket is at about the same pressure as the surrounding air in modern, oh, sorry, is about the same pressure in, in modern air. In modern sport balloons, the fire resistant materials such as Nomex, modern balloons have been made in many shapes. Y'all heard that? So you can be creative and especially one thing is you don't have to stick to a certain type of thing when you are creating uh, art, you know, as it pertains to the aesthetic of what a balloon is and how it actually works. Um, you have to keep to that uh, idea, but however, you can go beyond if you can make sense of what you planned on doing. And sometimes art doesn't even have to make sense. All right. So... Modern balloons have been made in many shapes, such as rocket ships and shapes of various commercial products. Though the traditional shape is used for most non-commercial and many commercial applications. The hot air balloon is the first successful, the hot air balloon is the first successful human carrying flight technology. The first untethered manned hot air balloon flight was performed by Jean-Francois Pilatre de Rosier and Francois Laurent de Hollandais on November 21st, 1783 in Paris, France, in a balloon created by the Montgolfier brothers. The first hot air balloon flown in the Americas was launched from the Walnut Street Jail in Philadelphia on January the 9th, 1793 by the French aeronaut, Jean-Pierre Blanchard. Hot air balloons that can be prepared through, propelled through the air rather than simply drifting with the wind are known as thermal airships. All right, so some hot air balloons can just be prepared, propelled through the air with wind. And some can be used with fire called thermal airships. So I want you all to do some research on hot air balloons, figure out what you are going to put on your balloon as a design that represents you. 
and um, you know, just have fun with it. See how you can make it look uh, really nice. And one thing I want you all to know is that I want you all to, once we get ready to construct the balloon part or the envelope, sorry, the envelope is the basket, the actual, the, uh, no, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, I got that messed up. The gondola, the gondola, the envelope is the balloon. The gondola is the basket. But anyway, when we get ready to, to construct the balloon, I want you all to uh, make sure to think about what type of uh, mechanism that you're gonna put at the top of it because I want you to be able to hang it so that it can look just like a, a hot air balloon when you display it. It can look uh, light, flowing, flightless, or flightful. All right, so that's all the information that I have to give you that and also think about the size of the hot air balloon that you want to make i recommend not going too large uh i would say like uh some of us have really really large heads i would say don't make the balloon no larger than your head but however you can go with a small balloon or several small balloons so think about how you want to make your balloon, uh, hot air balloon piece uh, looking. Um, the next thing is, as far as size, yeah, keep it on a small size. If head size or smaller than your head. All right, so the next thing is, we, the first thing we're gonna be constructing when we make that uh, hot air balloon are the gondolas or the baskets. And so I want you to research uh, different baskets and get an idea of what you pretty much um, have already had out there. And then also add your own originality and aesthetic to what you plan on doing for your basket. Baskets are commonly made of woven wicker or rattan. These materials have proven to be sufficiently light strong and durable for balloon flight. Such baskets are usually rectangular or triangular in shape. They vary in size from just big enough for two people to large enough to carry 30 people. Yep, they have some um, hot air balloons with a huge gondola on it that can carry 30 people. And I don't think I would have ever got on a hot air balloon carrying that many people. That's just too scary. All right, uh, as far as the weight and what could possibly happen if there was a mistake, so I'm not that brave. All right, such, oh, the, the baskets vary in size from, oh, I just read that one. Larger baskets often have internal partitions for structural bracing and car compartmentalize the, com the passengers. Small holes may be woven into the side of the basket to act as footholds for passengers climbing in or out. That's interesting. So once you research the uh, hot air balloons, you'll get even more um, ideas of what you could possibly make. Anybody remember something significant about hot air balloons? from like, uh, I never, I've never been in a hot air balloon. I've only seen them on like movies and TV shows. Anybody out there ever been in a hot air balloon? I saw the um, hot air balloon uh, show at Helen, Helen, Georgia. And they had like, um, during Oktoberfest years ago. And they had like dozens of balloons colorful that they set off in this huge field. And it was just simply beautiful. Yes, and that's a very, I think that would probably be even fun to stand on the ground and see that type of uh, spectacle. But what is one thing unique that I haven't talked about that you've seen on hot air balloons in movies? Like I've talked about the balloon, I've talked about the basket. What is What, what else is there? And I've talked about the fire or the flame that helps it run. So name something else that I haven't spoken about. 
the, the, the bags you throw down on the ground to get your butt back down. <laughs> All right, those that's that's correct. There used to be some kind of bags on the sides of the gondola or whatever, and you would put them on the outside. I don't know if they had sand in them or rocks or something to weight sand bags, but they definitely are used to bring yourself. I don't think I'm not sure if they are just used to bring yourself back down, Miss uh, Regina. I think the fire. The pressure of the fire is used to actually land, but those bags, I think, are used to steer. Steer, steer how? Weight. Steer meaning turn, like the weight is going to make you go right or left. Oh, okay. I'm not. Good. I'm not sure. Okay, let's check that out. That's bad bad for the weight. Once the, I'm once it the bags are for weights for steering and the fire once you let the fire cool down if you like turn the fire down from the flame then the balloon is going to start to descend but when you turn the flat fire up the balloon will fly so i think the fire yes. but the weight on the bags might have a lot to do with it as well i think once they turn the fire down they throw the bags out to hold the basket steady on the ground it's for weight Okay, so let's check it out. Does, does the, uh, does the uh, uh, blimp consider as being a balloon, but it's shaped in a different way, different weight, I mean, different size, different shape? I couldn't understand what you were saying all the way because your, your, your service kind of was choppy. Can you repeat it? I say, does the uh, blimp, like the good year blimp, oh. does that consider as being a certain kind of hot air balloon, but it's just shaped in a different way? Uh, I would kind of think so. I would think that they, you know how sometimes like they made the aircraft, the actual plane from looking at a bird, but even they just said our first air flight was with the hot air balloon. Sometimes we uh, progress with different uh, technology. So I would think that the blimp was some sort of a uh, hot air balloon. All right. You've probably seen a Goodyear blimp providing TV coverage to a sporting event such as football game or golf tournament. Like a hot air balloon, Blimps use a gas to generate lift, but unlike a hot air balloon, blimps can move forward through the air under their own power like airplanes. Mm -hmm. So it's similar to a hot air balloon, but it has some extra, some more technology that kind of makes it like a plane as well. All right, steering for a hot air balloon. Hot air balloons can be steered to a limited degree by changing the altitude of the flight. Wind in the Northern Hemisphere tends to turn east due to Coriolis effect as the altitude increases. So that didn't really give me any, uh, I'm gonna read more on that, but looking up this type of thing, even researching it can give you an idea of what you're making better and how to add different little uh, components to make it even more realistic. If you are planning on doing a realistic hot air balloon, you might plan on doing something really abstract or non-representational. So just think about what you're doing. And if you even want to make some type of uh, rough draft or drawing for your piece before you do it, feel free. Because I suggested that at the beginning of the class that you all started to make nice drawings of your pieces and even if your piece doesn't turn out all the way uh like it it just was a pre-pattern for you and it gives you a, another art piece to put in like a portfolio of uh ideas and things that you were planning on making and that type of thing all right moving right along if you have any questions or suggestions for any projects upcoming projects in this class please feel free to say so? Yes, ma'am, I will. 
Okay, and so I pre-rolled out two pieces of clay, which uh, and I rolled them and put them on this. Uh, one is a tray, and one is a plate. And I'm gonna get the stamps that I made last week here, and I'm gonna separate what I'm gonna use on each plate. So I think I had about 10 stamps. And so far, anything I know I have large, I'm going to put it, that one's gonna go over there. And that one's going to come over here. I'll use that one there. That one over there. Here. Here. Hmm. Four. Four. All right. Camera yes, ma'am. I don't know if you mentioned it, but another thing to use for this is a uh, uh, thread spools. Yes, I said there were so many. I said be creative as it pertains to what you can use. I said I use cork. I said yes. some old empty bottles. Uh, I know I cannot remember. Miss Gloria Bell just told me she made some. She used something totally different that I thought was very unique. Oh, I do know what it is. So I thought that was unique and she might tell y'all about it herself. And um, you, now you said using thread spools. So that's a good yes. idea as well. All right. So actually what I'm doing this for is just to show you all how uh, some of these stamps came out. And since I have two on each end, I'm gonna figure out how I'm gonna use these. I know I'm gonna only use this Jesus uh, one time and that's gonna be right in the center. Or do I wanna put that on there? Oh yeah, because I'm actually doing it to see how it looks. Sorry. I was like, maybe somebody might not want it if it's a religious piece, but I'm doing it just to see exactly how it looks. All right, so I'm going right in the center. I'm taking my time and hopefully my clay is not too moist. But I did uh, roll it out and I sponged it and smoothed it. And now I'm gently trying to take it out. I think that actually, I was really skeptical about that stamp, but that stamp looks really beautiful. I actually like it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that came out nice. Yeah, it's a really that good look, stamp. That looks good, Kim. Be sure to show it to Ethereum. Uh-huh. And don't forget that I said to you all, only thing is we have to just kind of clean these off. I'm just going to kind of rub it so it don't have, have to get immersed all the way in the water and everything. However, uh, Remember I said, once you all come up here to pick up anything or whatever, you can borrow these if you want to check them out like you check them out in the library. All right, in the library. All right, so now for this heart, I'm going to do two, one above the Christ symbol and one up below it. So just to see how that looks. And I'm taking my time to press it on each side before I pick it up. That one looked really well, to, look really good too, but I'm gonna put my second one before I show you all. That stamp is a little bit loose. I'm gonna have to re-glue that, make sure it's glued nice. Yeah. It came out really good. Yeah. The actual stamp. So once again, just kind of wiping it off so the clay won't build up. Yeah. 
And now I'm going to go ahead and uh, use this stamp four times around a piece. One, if you press a stamp into the clay and it picks up too much clay, then you will have to clean it off because if not, you're going to get the impression of where the, the dirt pretty much um, got on the piece. It'll leave that impression rather than being smooth. So you think it would be just so easy just to push the thing down and, you know, pull it up, but you have to make sure to look on each side and make sure you're pressing it all the way around. And I'm doing four here. And that's pretty good. So had I cleaned it off on the last one, it would have looked as smooth as the other four. However, still came out. Good. All right, so I'm putting the stamps I've already used to the side and moving right along. I have uh, these many more. I'm going to go right now. I'm going to use this um, this rose here and go. Well, I'm going to use this one first and go in between each circle, so to speak, or the last piece I did. And this one is so deep in areas that I'm going to have to clean this off on before every time I use it if I want my impression to be uh, any clean at all. And so this sponge is a little bit damp or moist to be able to clean up the clay off of these pieces. So your plate is level dry, Kim? What thing? As your plate is it level dry? How dry oh, is no. it? No, I I just uh, rolled it out right before class and smoothed it. Okay. It's it's wet, but it's not like mushy or anything. All right, that's a pretty cool stamp, but it's the one right here. Flower design, but it's it's okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the next flower in between those, that flower, so I'll have two on each side. I think I kind of like that. That looks pretty cool. But this particular piece, you see it's going to have clay all in the grooves. You're going to have to really try to rinse that out or clean it well. I'll try not to press that hard. All right, so I'm gonna go all the way around that and then show you that impression. Don't forget that next Thursday at 10 a.m. we're having our breast cancer awareness program on, um, it should be on Miss Buffy's link. So if y'all want to join in that, uh, please feel free. And I don't want anybody to be alarmed. If you don't see your artwork that you sent, sent me those pictures in the show, it's because I did not get enough pictures, but I'm still working on getting everybody's piece that I need to. I think I need like three or four more people's pieces and it was only about six or seven. All right, this is how that rose looks. Design. And this is it. I'm probably going to rinse that off. And so now I'm going to use this to do some kind of design all the way around the Jesus to uh, enclose, enclose him in. You mean you didn't get the breast cancer pieces? I have not gotten them from everybody. We only had about six or seven, so it don't make sense to just put two or three. 
hopefully I will get them from the other people. I talked to them. They said they were going to send them to me. So hopefully they will. I don't know quite what I'm doing with this particular stamp, but I should have kind of mapped it out first, but I didn't. So I got to make it work. One, two, three, four. All right. Gonna kind of go up here. 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 And one more. All right, it looks a little bit offish right down the side. But I'm just gonna clean it up by lining it up with the edge of the same step. So now that's how it looks. All right, moving right along. I have two more pieces to use for this particular piece just to see how it's gonna come out. Wow, now that wasn't good at all. Let me smooth that out. That stamp might be a waste. I don't think it's pretty much gonna make any kind of impression. Let's see what this piece is gonna do. Wow. Now I wish I wouldn't have did that because it's like I gotta go all the way around. All right, don't forget that anytime anybody comes up here uh, for a clay schedule, if you wanna use these stamps, let me know. And we will be starting that hot air balloon piece next week. So if you all need any type of materials, please let me know. Do you have any items for pickup? Uh, Yes, ma'am, I do. So, Miss uh, Miss uh, Diana, you can pick up some stuff. It'll be best to pick it up tomorrow than today. Okay. Miss Jacqueline Lattimore, I have some pieces for you. If you need to pick up something as well. Okay. What time? Tomorrow. Anytime time. tomorrow. Okay. I'll come early. Yes, ma'am. You come in before class like you usually do? Yeah. Okay, my last stamps with the diamonds on them, the rhinestones. Uh, I didn't even see that they really even made any particular type of impression. So this is how this entire piece looks. I just did it to get some of the... Uh, stamps out and I'm going to quickly do this one right here we had an eye right here so I'm going to go ahead and do the eye in the center oh how about doing two eyes that'd be cool always doing one eye how about two I think I just broke my stamp A little fragile and I want to I want to go back on the other one I was a little bit afraid that it was gonna break all right so those are the two eyes and what I'm gonna do is play off of that those two eyes and go ahead and make a whole face and so I'm gonna Utilize these two circles for the nose. Thanks. Right here for the nostrils. Yikes. All right. 
this piece is going to be for the hair. The other side of the eye, you don't want to bring it down for the no, bridge of the nose. What other side of what eye? The eye. In yeah, you, the other side of the cork that, that you have the eye on. Right here? I thought it would yeah, be interesting for the bridge to the nose. If, right there? Yeah. Uh, in the center. It would make an eyebrow. I was going to use that for half. Uh, yeah, I would have to, but I thought it would be interesting for the bridge to the nose. But that was just an idea. It's OK. I'm going to make sure before I do that. So right here, what can I use for my mouth? I like the way this thing has this groove in the inside. So I'm just gonna start from the center here. Oh shoot. Ah. Ah. No cursing in class. Actually, I was gonna go all the way across, but I like how the mouth looks kind of pouty. Just like that. All right, so first I'm going to use this for a few impressions, just for a curl to come down. Uh, I can't pull that up, so let me get a tool to pick it up. And the reason why I can't pull it up is because the clay kind of wet. Uh, all right. And I think I'm going to go into the brows, like Miss Diana suggested. This uh, clay is a little bit wetter. That's why the clay is sticking like that. She looks serious, huh? All right. So now I'm going to continue to use this for some hair, but I want to use something for my ears. I'm going to use this button side for ears or earrings. Oh, okay, this is going to be my ears. Those are the tips of my ears, like the earlobes, and these are going to be my earrings. Kind of cute. But just because you're using stamps, you can be creative and go ahead and create. You see, I've created almost a whole face with this. Got earrings on there. And now I'm going to use the shell end. I've used both sides here. Both sides here. I didn't use this side yet. <clears throat> And I didn't use this side yet, but I will. All right, for the hair, I'm just gonna see what this is gonna look like. All the way around there on the edge. I'm using this texture on the edge. I really love how the texture of this shell looks. It's so earthy and just so nice. I'll show y'all how that looks. Now yeah, that looks use, good. Now I want to use this shell to get some more texture of hair, but coming inward towards the face to see how that looks. If you, uh, at some point in time, you always want to look at your stamp to see if it's overloaded with clay if so clean it so that you can still get a good impression i'm going all the way around All right, and I want to use this one more time. 
like right in this area here. Going all the way around. And just because I use these stamps doesn't mean, let me see, I have two more pieces to use. So I'm gonna use this and see how it's gonna look to make eyelashes. Even though it's uh, contoured or decorative, I think it's pretty cool. All right, and then I have that last button that I wanna use. So I wanna go back and use this impression for my curl to make that more profound. That looks good. And then I wanna use this piece possibly for the nose. Once again, some of these pieces don't make a good uh, design. Just make the same design that the rhinestones did, nothing. All right, and so as far as making this look a little bit neater, I think I want to clean my, the piece that I did with the lips. It is right, where is it? Right here. And I'm gonna just press that down in there one more time to make it neat each side. That looks good. And then I want to use my needle tool just to draw the impression of my, my eyes so that they'll be more pronounced. Oh, she's so cute. Thank you. And then I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to use, looking for a stick. I was looking for something that wouldn't be uh, as pointy as this needle tool. However, I'm going to just use a toothpick. To go around this circle. All right, I hope you all make some stamps where we're able to share with each other and just, you know, be able to share even the stamps with each other and share uh, the designs just by looking at your artwork with each other as well. And so this is how the piece looks. I like that. I think that came out really nice with the stamps. Yes, it did. I like the mouth the most and that little squiggly piece you put for her hair. Thank you. The, the, eyes earrings, came out the earrings came out good too. Yeah, so since these parts that y'all just brought out, I'm going to do like a thicker line on the impression that you all uh, said looked really nice. And I think it'll, for some reason, I guess they probably stand out to your eye. So I want to kind of make a deeper impression of the line. I'm going to uh -huh. do the same thing for the eyebrows quickly. 
So sometimes I you didn't can still, see the earrings. It's okay. I'm gonna bring it back up. So sometimes you can do art really quickly and get something even really beautiful. It doesn't even have to take a long time. And sometimes in art, you know, it takes a long time depending on what you're actually doing, which doesn't matter as long as you get it done. And the earrings, I think I'm gonna just kind of go around the edges where it, the impression didn't get in there that deep. And once this plate is uh, fired and everything and glazed, I can put uh, rhinestones on this piece, jewels, whatever. All right. I'll be right with you all as soon as I get on this top lip. Just did the bottom lip. Top lip is fine. All right. That's the fastest makeup job I've ever heard of. <laughs> Thank oh, y'all. So cute. <laughs> so, you know, feel free to know that y'all can make the same uh, beautiful art. Just take your time. Maybe make a set with the family. Grand grandmother. I really, I like that, Kim. That is so cute. Make grandmama, granddaddy, make the baby, make the daughter, the son. Thank you so much, Miss Regina and everybody else. Kimberly, uh, the last thing I made before we had the break was you had a new thing of stamps that somebody had donated. And I think me and Tanya had made uh, some, you some of those stamps to make some pieces so the last pieces I made based on the date on the back of these before we took that break and never went back. Right, correct. Uh, well, stamps, you, I, we cut off four pieces of uh, clay and used all of those different stamps. I used flowers, I used a saying, and I used some fruit and things like that. So those stamps are beautiful. All right, so let me rinse my hands. So, Mr. Theory, did you see the stamp of the uh, the piece from Jesus? Did I what now? Did you see this stamp? The impression, Miss Miss uh, Regina told me to make. Oh sense. yeah. Oh, you saw it. Uh -huh. it. It came out different from what I thought. Oh okay. I thought Jesus would be face down. Well, let me see the hand. It's not face down or anything. It's just the impression. So you definitely can tell that that's what it is. Yeah, it's hard to see, but I can see his knees sticking out some kind of way. That's what I thought. <laughs> okay. So I think that tray came out really well, being that it's Jesus and it has like, like a floral type of theme all the way around it. And then the um, the face that we did today came out really well. I want you all to go ahead and start getting your ideas together. And even if you don't draw a picture, go ahead and write down everything that you're gonna do and make for your hot air balloon. So when you start to make it, you don't have to use your brain power to think about what in the world you was gonna do. You'll have everything kind of mapped out. All right. Anybody have any suggestions, questions? Comments? Uh, I, I can get my pottery pieces back to tomorrow. Okay. 
Yes, ma'am. So when, if you all are in class tomorrow, I will definitely let you know whose uh, things are finished. And um, cause I'm unloading the kiln today and everything. So um, I'll let you know whose things are finished. Oh, sorry. Anyway, Miss Jacqueline Lattimore, Miss uh, Gwendolyn Alexander, if you wanna come up here before class tomorrow, you're more than welcome. And um, I know I'll see Miss Etheria after class. But if it's something else that somebody else has, I'll let you all know in class tomorrow. And um, thanks so much for joining Hand Built Pottery. Don't forget about the Breast Cancer Awareness uh, event next week on September the, sorry, not September, September, oh, sorry about that. October the 14th on Thursday. Uh, have a I wonderful and blessed. Excuse me, Tammy, before we yeah. leave, can I show my stamp? Please do. Thank you so much. So Miss Gloria Bell made some stamps, you all. I uh, a lot of mine is a little bit larger than yours. I hope that's okay. Yeah, it doesn't matter about size. You might have had different pieces than I had, especially like when you're saving up that costume jewelry. Okay, nice. what is that? An earring? That was oh, two, that's nice. that was two earrings, and I glued them together, going opposite directions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I thought those was muscle. It looked nice. What did you put in? I thought those were muscle shells. I, I, I bought uh, these at the Dollar Tree. They were sponge paint brushes, and I just pulled the paint, uh, the sponge off of them and used okay. the sponge. Oh, okay. And what was that you just put down? Huh? That was the, 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 the handle from the sponge brush. Did you uh did I thought you had a different one after the earring? Well that that's the end of that's what the sponge was on, but I'll be using that oh. too to make impressions. Be oh okay. That was a necklace uh that, that's on the chain. I just uh it broke and I was gonna refinish it. I think I bought it at the thrift store and I just put it on the paintbrush uh stick. Like and that. that was an old earring right there. Okay. Okay. This one this was an earring that I made when I was doing jewelry. And I just put it on the end of the stick to make impressions. Mm -hmm. And this was that's nice. That's some kind of piece of jewelry that I put on it. I used to do jewelry, so I have a lot of stuff that's, you know, that I'm not using anymore. I like that. That's me. And, like and this, you know, has the grooves in it. Yes, mm. ma'am. And that was a charm that goes on Kumo, Kumi Hemo bracelets. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's nice. And again, that was a, a earring. I never, that was the reason why I didn't throw away all my broken jewelry. That's, that's pretty right. That's now. good. That's great. All of that is great. And this ha actually has a hole in it, okay. in the center of it. Yeah. But um, the stick was too small. So I just uh, put some black like, fall around it to make it big enough to, to stick, and then I put the E6000 to make the ball stick in there. Okay. Okay, that's creative. And, and that was a piece of a bracelet that I was gonna make. You can't see it real good, but it has a lot of little designs in the center. Okay. Yes. And that is make a good impression. <clears throat> and that's it. Oh, you did good. Ms. That's very Gloria, nice. Very good. Miss Gloria, Thank have you, you had a chance to use your stamp yet? Uh no. Mm -mm. Okay. So I can't wait to see what you make when you actually use it too. Yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to that too. Yeah, so I just showed you how to. You know, if you get something in your mind, like a design or a picture, I just showed you how you can make a picture, just stamp, use your stamps. 
Like I made this face with the stamps. You can make a bird with stamps. You can make images. You know, you just got to be creative. Wow. All right. Thank you so much, Miss Gloria, for sharing that with us. Those were beautiful. And I love the actual, I love the actual raised and indentation parts of your jewelry. Like, I just can't wait to see the impressions of them. Yeah. So um, once again, you are next week. Don't forget, even if you don't, if you don't have clay, you need to see me because we all will be starting our gondolas or baskets for the hot air blooms next week. All right. Thank you so much for joining Handbuilt Pottery. Please stay safe, stay positive, and love yourselves. My name is Kimberly Wright. I'll see you all tomorrow. Peace. 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 Thank you. You all Peace. have a great day. You too, love. Have a good weekend. Thank you so much.